How many believe that this Sunday morning? God is in the house this morning. The power of the Holy Ghost is here this morning. Would you just worship Him and honor Him and praise Him? Let everything that hath breath praise ye the Lord. Ma, 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 ma. Oh, God is in the house this morning. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Somebody just worship him this morning. Just worship him this morning. He's here this morning, church. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. What do you need this morning, children? God, he's here. He's here to meet your every need. He's here to supply this morning. He is Jehovah Jireh, the Lord that supplies all my needs. He is here this morning. He is Jehovah Raphael. He is Jehovah Sid Canoe, the Lord my righteousness. He is my banner this morning. He is Jehovah, the supreme being of all this morning. He is the great I am. Oh, hallelujah. I love you this morning, Lord. I praise you. Lord, that you are here in this place. Lord, the Bible said it was noised abroad when Jesus came in the house. Lord, it has been noised abroad this morning, Lord, that thou art with us. I love you this morning. I praise you, Yahweh. I praise you, Yahweh. You are supreme this morning, my Lord. You're almighty, you're omnipotent. You're omnipresent. Mandelo mm. Lord, you are here this morning. Lord, you are here this morning. Lord, we honor you. Lord, we reverence you in this place. Lord, that songwriter said, I can't even walk, Lord, without you holding my hand. Help us right now, Lord. Those that are weak among us this morning, Lord, give them strength. Those that are sick in their body, oh Lord, you are our healer. Heal their bodies. There is a bomb in Gilead this morning. There is a bomb in Gilead. How many love the Lord this morning? Do you love him? I said, do you love him? We make more noise than that at a ball field. Do we love him? Do you love him? Shut up. 
love you this morning, Lord. We love you, Lord. God is good this morning, children of the Lord. God is good. He's in the house this morning. <laughs> He's in the house this morning. If you came looking for him, you don't have to look any further. He's here. If you came to meet him, he's here. If you came to meet him this morning, he's here in the house. Amen. His Shekinah glory is here in the house this morning. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I've come to worship him and to magnify his name. Great is the Lord, and greatly is his name to be praised. I will magnify the Lord. Amen. Give God another hand of praise, would you? Amen. Amen. I tell you, if he wasn't here, I'd just soon go home. Amen. But I'm glad he's here this morning. Uncle used to sing a song, I can feel him in my hands. Yes, amen. I can feel him in my feet. Yes, glory. I can feel him all over me this morning. I've got a message to preach, but I'm just trying to follow the Lord here this morning. Amen. Songwriter said, I don't know what you came to do, but I came to praise the Lord. You may come to hold down a seat this Sunday morning, but I come to lift up the name of Jesus. I come to magnify the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Do I have anybody here this morning that has come to worship and magnify the great God of glory? If my people which are called by my name would humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven. Then will I forgive their sin. And then will I heal the land? Mm. He's here this morning, children of the living God. He's here. We worship you, Lord. We magnify your name. The songwriter said again, I can't even walk without you holding my hand. In the book of James this Sunday morning, stand with me please and worship the Lord. I don't know how far I'll go this morning. We've been studying the book of James. As a matter of fact, this chapter will be this coming Wednesday night, but I just felt led of the Lord to use a few scriptures out of this chapter this morning. I asked Brother Jody to sing the song. I can't even walk without him holding my hand. I come by to tell you we can't do nothing without the Lord this morning, children of God. We can do nothing without him. He said in James 4 verse 13, Go to now, ye that say today or tomorrow, we will go into such a city and continue there a year and buy and sell and get gain. Whereas in verse 14, ye know not, what shall be on the morrow? Mm. Mm. You know not what shall be on the morrow. For what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away. My God. For that ye ought to say, if the Lord will. Somebody say those words with me. If the Lord will, we shall live and do this or that. But now ye rejoice in your boasting, and all such rejoicing is evil. Therefore to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. Would you say thank you Lord for the word? Shake somebody's hand and tell him you love them this morning. 
And you may be seated this morning. Praise the Lord. I feel the Lord in the house this morning. I'll go just as far as he wants me to go and I'm going to stop this morning. I feel in my spirit there's somebody here needs something from God this morning. And you don't have to wait till I finish this sermon. You can come at any given moment that God calls you this Sunday morning. That the spirit of God begins to prick your heart. You don't have to wait. Whatever you're going through with this morning, he's here to meet your every need this Sunday morning. I'd like to preach on a subject, planning today, gone tomorrow. Planning today, gone tomorrow. In the word of the Lord, in James chapter 4, in verse 13, we see they're making plans. When he said, go to now ye that say today or tomorrow, notice the next three words, we will go. I asked myself the question and I wrote it down. Do our plans include God? I said, do our plans include God? Do we even consult with Him before making our decisions? Hmm? Making plans that sometimes don't include God. A lot of folks today are making plans to do this today, to do that tomorrow. But I thought as I was studying this preacher, what if something happens that changes our plans? What if something devastates our life? Because Proverbs 27 and 1 said, Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. You see, we're planning all the time to do the things that we desire to do. But the plans that you and I have set, the goals that you and I have set, we may never see them come to pass or to fortuity. Why? Because God may have other plans for our lives. You see, I never planned to be a preacher. Can I get an amen over here? Huh? That wasn't in my plans. My plan was to work, have my home, have land, have a couple of cars, and that I did have. And God blessed me with those things. But God had other plans. I just wanted to live in the town of Maxton, let my children grow up. Amen, Brother Kim, and just have my home and family there and be able to retire there. But you see, my plans were not God's plans. My ways was not God's ways. God may have a different plan for you, honey, this morning. He may have a different plan for you sir and whatever God's plans is we will not deviate from them because God has a way of bringing us in to where God's plans will be fulfilled in our hearts and in our lives Amen. go to today or tomorrow we're going to go into such a city we're going to continue there a year we're going to buy a sale and get gain but what happens if that changes Go to Luke chapter 12 with me just a moment, would you? Luke chapter 12. Beginning with verse 16. And he spake a parable unto them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully. Verse 17, And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do? Because I have no room where to bestow my fruits. Mm. And he said, this will I do. I will pull down my barns. Now notice what he will do. Sometimes we leave God out of our plans. Come on, church. Y'all got to help me this morning. Huh? I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'll pull down my barns and I'll build greater. And there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. And then I will say to my soul, Soul, thou hast much goods laid up 
<laughs> For many years, take thine ease now and eat and drink and be merry. That was his plans. But notice God's plans. Changed quickly, did it not? But God said unto him, thou fool. This night, this night, thy soul shall be required of thee. Then who shall all those things be which thou hast provided? How quickly, how suddenly man's plans can be altered. I thought about Brother Ray Ward the other night. I think it's 67, 68, brother, brother Earl, years old, somewhere in that area. Lived all his life, and the last year and a half, two years, somewhere in that, he found Jesus Christ as his Redeemer. Fell in love with a man called Jesus. Had worked hard all his life, Brother Jody. Tried to save up, always been good to people. But sitting the other night in his chair, Fell over. Blood started gushing out of him. Rushed him to Wilmington Hospital. Put him on a machine. Unplugged him the next afternoon. And he went out into eternity. How quick. How suddenly. Our plans can change course quickly. See, we're planning today, but we could be gone tomorrow. You see, the Bible said, lay up your treasures in heaven where no moth nor rust doth corrupt, where no thief shall break in and steal what you and I have accumulated. Where our treasures is, there will our heart be also. I ask you this Sunday morning, what are you planning for? What are your goals this Sunday morning? Where are you going to go if your plans are suddenly altered, if they're changed? What are you going to do what if things don't work out what are we going to do church huh what if they take away the 401k tomorrow what are we going to do I'm talking to you folks I don't have one huh? what are you going to do if all of a sudden one of your loved ones are snatched out from under you what are you going to do You've always depended on that other spouse to be there for you. Huh? I think about so many times my wife, if something was to happen to me in the ministry, she'd have nowhere to go. We don't own a home. All we've got is what we have in the parsonage. But I know that when I made these plans and God said, I will be with you. I am persuaded to believe this old book this Sunday morning that whatever God's word says, I still believe it. And if God says, I'm going to be there for you as long as I'm in the center of your plans, as long as I'm guiding you, boy, as long as I'm directing you, as long as I'm holding your hand, I'll lead you where you need to go. And when you get there, I'll provide for you. I'll make a way out of no way. I'll open a door that man said could not be opened. And I'll close the doors that man said could not be opened. Why do you come to tell me, Brother John? I'm planning today, but I couldn't be gone tomorrow. But I've come out to let you know that God is in the center of my prayers. God is in the midst of everything that I do because He is my way, my truth, and my life. This man said, I'll build me bigger barns. I'll do this and I'll do that. But his plans were altered. There's a lot of people in the church today. All they want to do is get a dollar. Can I preach a little while this morning? Huh? They just want to get a dollar. They want to store up everything they can get. But he said to this rich man, Tonight, thou fool, 
Thy soul will be required of thee. Then whose will all these things be? Listen. I've never seen a U-Haul behind a hearse. Come on, y'all might as well help me preach. Huh? Never seen that U-Haul, Brother Kim, behind a hearse. The only thing that individual's got is what's in that casket, what's on his back. Hey, Amen. A lot of times they go out barefoot. Ain't even got no shoes on their feet because everything they got is right there. Listen, you can do what you want to do this Sunday morning. You don't have to listen to this preacher man if you don't want to. You have a choice this morning and you can choose whatever you desire to do. But can I tell you the plans that you make will have a result. There will be an outcome and your plans, whether they include God or they don't include God. One day you're going to stand before God and every man, every woman, every boy, and every girl is going to stand before God and they're going to give an account to God how they have lived their life whether it be for God or whether it be against God. Whether you be on your way to heaven or on your way to hell. Every man will stand before God and give an account to God one day. Store up if you want to. He said, what is man's life? Huh? Vapor. I thought about that word vapor this week. It's just a mist. It's just a hazy matter. Huh? The Bible said in 1 Peter 1 24, for all flesh is as of grass and all the glory of man as the flower of the grass. The grass withereth and the flower thereof falleth away. David said in Psalm 144 verse 3. He said, Lord, what is man? That thou art mindful of him. Or the son of man that thou makest account of him. Verse 4, he said, man, man, listen, man is like vanity. His days are as a shadow that passeth by. Job 14 and 1, Job declared, Man that is born of a woman is a few days and full of trouble. I ask you today, what is your life, my friend? How is it that you value it so much when it can be here today and gone tomorrow? What is your life that a man would cherish it so much that he would sell everything Thing he's got. Amen for his very own life. What is man's life? Amen. I tell you today, man's life is nothing. Let's see the Bible said in Genesis chapter 1 that God breathed the very life into man and when he breathed the breath of life into man, man became a living soul. I come by to tell you today, if God hadn't breathed on me this morning, I'd have never got up out of bed. But I come I'm about to tell you, God breathed on me this morning, and when he breathed on me, I got up, put my clothes on me, preach brother John, I'm in my right mind, I know where I'm going, I know who I am, I know where I'm headed, I'm a child of the king, I've been washed in the blood, my sins are under the blood, I've been forgiven, I'm on my way to heaven, and the journey's getting sweeter, do I have any children? of God in the house. Do I have anybody that's making plans one day to leave this world and go to heaven and spend eternity with the Lord Jesus Christ? Do I have any saints in the house? What are you telling me, Brother John? If God I woke us up and breathed on us. We wouldn't have been here this morning. Huh? Sometimes folks bother me, Brother Kim, with this mentality. Look what I've done. Look what I've accomplished. May Israel now say, if it had not been for the Lord, if it had not been for the Lord, who was on my side. Tell me Lord. Where would I be? Where would I be? Can I tell you where you'd be? You'd be in hell. 
Come on, talk to me, preacher. If it hadn't have been for the Lord, I'd have been gone this morning, Sister Dane. But he showed me a little mercy this morning. His grace was upon me. Huh? And he might have said, I'm not done with you yet, boy. I need you another day. What is man's life? It's just like a vapor. A mist that appeareth. And then it vanishes away. What is man's life? It's like a spark that flies up from a bonfire in the midnight hour. It appears for a moment and then it vanishes. So what if you live to be a hundred? What is that? I believe the Bible said one, word, one day with the Lord is as a thousand years. And a thousand years as of one day. So what if you live to be a hundred and your plans don't include God? You've just lived a long life void of Him. If you're here this morning, listen to me somebody. The preacher of Ecclesiastes said, All is vanity and vexation of spirit. Matter of fact, the preacher of Ecclesiastes, if you read the back of the book, when he looked back over his life, he said, Without God, all is vanity. What are you telling me, preacher? If you live your life without God, it's vanity. Amen. You're just going through the motions every day. You just get up. But I ask you, what is your life? Amen. What is your life for today? I've heard people say, I have no life, preacher. You're right without God. You have no life. You're just walking around in a body, a hole. Amen. You're a walking dead man or a walking dead woman. Can I preach to you? I know I got to preach tonight, but hang with me, would you? Huh? Let us do this if the Lord wills. Huh? I, I talked to the pastor up here at the Church of God the other day, and he's really going through some health problems, and and not. And I want you to really pray for Brother Class. I don't know much about him, but he's been laid on my heart lately. And I called him up, talked to him, and found out he's in bad shape physically. But there's some demon, demonic spirits that showed up up there as well. And he said to me this morning, he said, Preacher, I can deal with the physical sickness. But he said, that demonic spirit is something else. When you have to deal with that, when you try to preach, amen, and people sitting in the congregation and they're mocking you and making fun of you. He said, it's hard. But I'm telling you, I said all that to say this. The bottom line, Brother Class said, he said, preacher, John, I so appreciate you calling me. It meant the world to me today for you to call me and encourage me. I said, listen, you're my brother in the Lord. And he said, you know, whether I stay here or whether I leave, he said, I've lost everything. You don't know much about this man up here but his wife looked in his face some years ago and said if you stay in the ministry I'm divorcing you I will not put up with the ministry anymore and she walked out on him and he's still trying to pastor all by himself but he said I want to be in the center of God's will sister Yvonne he said no matter what happens to me if my life is not important if I'm not in the center of God's will how many want to be in his center of his will I said how many want to be in the center of God's divine plan for your life how many really want to be there this morning we clap yes and that's great but what if God's plans are different than your plans he said preacher I never thought I'd be by myself Sick, can't even walk into the pulpit and preach this morning. Somebody's got to fill in for him. He's all by himself. I called him again this morning just to let him know we love him and appreciate him. What are you telling me, preacher? We don't know what God's plans are for us. 
We may know a portion of it. But I never knew that 20 some years ago, this is what God had planned for me. Brother Hunt, I didn't know that. All I knew is when I was living in Maxon and God said, I want you to go preach for me, boy. I said, yes, sir, Lord, I'm willing to do that. And for three years, we evangelized. It was great. And I enjoyed that. And that's all I really wanted to do, Sister Small. But what about the day God said, uh-uh, that's enough. I want you to go pastor for me now. And I said, but Lord, can I just be honest with you? I said, I don't want to do that, Lord. Because I've seen my pastor. I've seen and watched other pastors. And I see and know what they've been through, what they've experienced. And Lord, I don't want to do this. I've got a good job, Lord. Man, I, I'm talking about 20 some years ago, I was making $11 an hour. Amen. My wife was making $8 or $9 an hour in the sewing room. Man, we were living the good life, Brother Kim. But I told you all of this to let you know that sometimes God has other alternatives for our lives. And what you and I may think that we know the will of God. Sometimes, Sister Shirley, we don't know. We're so far fetched from the will of God, we can't hardly see daylight anymore. But I come by to tell you if you'll line up with this book if you'll get in the word of God and you'll let him hold your hand and lead you and guide you and direct you my friend your life will be fruitful and it will be blessed of the Lord you may not always be where you think you want to be there's been times in this local church I said God do I even, even need to be here any longer maybe my time's up here God huh Yeah, it does, don't it, Brother Hunt? Huh? Hear that, Brother Hunt said that sounds familiar. I think every preacher in this building would say the same thing. Lord, is it time for me to move on? And sometimes in my spirit, I wanted to move on. I want to be like George Jeff. I want to be moving on up. And then God's spirit says, nope, not now. I heard the preacher say here after 33 years and a half uh, of preaching this gospel message or pastoring I should say he's still preaching the message I never forget what he told me here some months ago he said every Monday morning I thought about resigning I thought about just quitting throwing in the towel said that's enough huh? yeah give me my pink slip yeah fire me huh? there ain't a preacher in this building it never felt like that before there ain't none of you that's ever been employed by another employee that ain't felt that way at some time. When you walked on your job Monday morning, Brother Land, you said, I'm quitting. Huh? It could be like the old fella said, it's not too pretty to take this old job, you know. Hey, preach, Brother John. I'm just trying to be honest with you this morning and let you know that's the way we feel at times, folks. But you know, it's our flesh. It's our own desires. It's our own craving. It's our own appetite. But God is saying, no, you're over here and I'm trying to get you over here. Has anybody ever been there beside the preacher? Hey, man, I need about 10 to stand up and say, yeah, that's me, preacher. I've been over here and the whole time God's been trying to get me over here and he has to make me sick. I have to lay down and bow die before I'm willing to say yeah God take me out and move me over here I'm willing to be an obedient vessel I'm willing to be sacrificed God whatever you want that's my desire whatever you want Lord that's what I want whatever your plans for me Lord let me follow you because the most miserable person I've ever seen is a man or woman out of God's will. Huh? I'm still talking about planning today and going tomorrow. I'm not lost. Huh? Rich man thought he had it all together. Huh? But that night, he's going to die. Huh? What about it, Brother Hezekiah? Hezekiah thought he had everything together. But there was a prophet. The son of Amos. Isaiah by name. 
I don't feel him this morning. And God speaks to the prophet. And he says, I want you to go to Hezekiah's house. And I want you to tell him. And I'll just paraphrase it. He said, I want you to tell him he's going to die. Can you imagine receiving a word like that, preacher? Huh? A doctor looked in your face and said, you got six weeks. And you're going to die. You know, I, I've always prayed, Sister Small, God let me see my children grown. Anybody ever prayed that in here besides me? My children are grown now. Now I have grandchildren. And I might be a little bit selfish, but I'm praying now, Lord. Y'all ain't going to help me. I'm praying now, let me see my grandchildren grown. Huh? And, and if he lets me live to see them get grown, I might pray something different then. Huh? Yeah, I need some great grands in. Yeah. 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 These folks are a little bit older than I am, a few years. What are you telling me, preacher? That's our plans. That's what Brother John wants. I wanted to stay in Maxon, but God wanted me in Chadburn. Huh? He first sent me to a God forsaken place called the mountains. I was, I was like a fish out of water there. Here I am, a brown skinned man that loves the fellowship and worship me, sends me to a place where they don't do nothing. Just as dead as it could be. He put me in the fire. You're right, preacher. I went to Wally World for two years and never saw nobody I knew. Mountain folks are different, you know. I love every one of them, and God blessed us there, and, and God gave us a great work. But I found myself many days down at that church laying prostrate in the floor and saying, God, how much longer? This church is doing nothing, Lord. But, you know, after that, God began to bless through fasting and prayer. God began to minister to us and gave us uh, another great year. There. That was the first year. The second year was just a blessing. But they were different. And then one day I got a phone call. In the year of 90, 1996. From my overseer. And he said, Brother McPherson, I've been praying. Will you go to Chadburn and pastor that church? I said, where is Chadburn? I've never heard of the place. Yeah, I like Clarendon. Yeah. So i make a long story short. After a couple of weeks of praying and fasting, I said, give me two weeks. I'll call you back with my answer. Okay. And I called him back. And I said, yes, sir, Mr. State Overseer. I feel like that God wants us to go. I'm willing to move. It's a hard thing to pack up a 24-foot U-Haul. Put a little travel trailer behind it and haul my van and stuff on. And come down here. And for hours can't find Church of God of Prophecy. <laughs> Steve went to the police station. They don't even know where the Church of God of Prophecy is. And I thought, God, where am I at? And when I came down through the heart of Chapman, I said, oh, God. <laughs> I'm just being honest with you this morning, church. Come on now. Huh? I, 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 I'm about like the children of Egypt and I was getting ready to say, send me back, Lord. <laughs> I'd rather be under the test of Pharaoh. <laughs> and I made my way on down through here and come to find out there were some people standing out there in the yard. <laughs> and we rolled that 24-foot U-Haul in here and unloaded everything and they helped us get in and square it away. Now it's been how many years? 19 years. If God has a plan for you, listen to me, there ain't enough of devils in hell can stop it nor alter it. 
What are you telling me, Brother John? I said, if God has a plan for you, and I believe with all my heart that God has a plan for everyone in this place, everyone in this world, God has a plan for you. And if God has a plan for you, you might as well buckle up, get suited up, step in, and say, God, here am I. Use me. Send me, God. Whatever you want. God, your plan is my plan. So we moved to Chadburn. And God has blessed the work here. Started out in that little building back yonder with nine head of people. And God has blessed us through the years. You know the story. God blessed us to build on, get a few people. Huh? We build on. He said they'll come. Why? Because I said, Lord, not my will. Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. And he said, Father, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. Whatever you want from me, Father, I'm willing to do it. And he comes and does his father's will. And at 33 years and a half of age, he's hung on a cross. And he's crucified. And then with some of his last words, he looked up and said, Father, why hast thou forsaken me? He didn't want to go there. But he was willing to do whatever his father wanted him to do. You see, for a year, I lay in bed at night and hear my children cry in those mountains, wanting to go home, Daddy. I want to go home. And I'd turn my face to the wall as Hezekiah did, and I'd weep for the lance because I knew where God wanted me, but my flesh wanted to hear my children and my wife, and I wanted to go home. But every morning, I'd get up, and the, and the next day would be a little bit better and a little bit better. And I look back now and I wouldn't take nothing, nothing, nothing Amen. for the two years that God kept me there. Because he taught me some things. Huh? He taught me how to trust him. Come on, somebody. Sometimes God has got to send you to the backside of the desert. I said God has got to send you to the backside of the desert to get you where you're willing to follow God. Has anybody ever been there beside of me? Has God ever take you that way in order to bring you back around just like he did the children of Israel? Forty years they wandered in the desert when they could have been there in just a short while. See, sometimes we're hard-headed. We're disobedient just like our Sunday school lesson this morning. Come on. We want to do things our way. Well, take this for example. Elvis Presley did it his way. Huh? Yeah, there's another friend. He's older than I am. I don't remember all of him, brother. Yeah. 50 years. What are you telling me, preacher? You can do it your way. Or you can get humble and say, God, whatever you want for me is what I want. I told you I never wanted to be a preacher, but when God said, it's time to go, boy, I fought it for a year, but I couldn't fight it any longer because I was out of his will. And I don't know about you. You remember the day you got saved? Come on, stay with me just a minute. I'm not lost. I know where I'm at. You remember that conviction that was on you? Amen. And you felt so miserable you didn't know what in the world to do. You didn't know what was going on, Sister Ann. But it was the convicting power of God's Spirit upon your life. What's that got to do with this preacher? Do you remember the day that you came down to an altar or wherever you were at? And I've heard people say it time and time again. And when I got saved, I had to say it. 
The day the Lord saved me, I felt like my burden, that weight that was on my shoulders was lifted. It was gone. And Hallelujah. I was free. Free, but not to do my own thing. Paul told us about that in the book of Romans, didn't he? He said he was a free man, but he became a servant under the Lord Jesus Christ. Huh? He became a servant of righteousness. He was willing to do whatever his father wanted him to do. Can I ask you, Sister Davis, come on to the piano for me this morning. Sister, if you will. I don't even know what time it is. Listen. If God has got something for you to do, you can fight it all you want to. You can resist it all you want to. But you're fighting a losing battle. You will never win this battle. Do you hear this preacher this Sunday morning? You will never win this battle as long as you do it your way. I'm talking to somebody right now. Right now. There's somebody in this building that needs to hear what I'm telling you right now. You've been doing it your way for a long time now. And can I ask you, where has your way got you? You've ended up in the bottle. You've ended up drugs. You've ended up taking a shot in your veins. Snorting cocaine. Fighting the demons of hell. That's what your way will get you. You see, can I just tell you a moment? I remember those days in my life, you see. I backslid on the Lord so many, many years ago as a teenager. And I thought, I'm going to do it my way. I ended up in the bottle. I ended up doing drugs. I ended up living a hellish life. Anybody ever been there besides me? Come on, I feel it this morning. I'm not proud of that stuff this morning. But I feel like I had to say that because I'm talking to somebody right now. God's Spirit's dealing with somebody in this place. And He says, you're making plans. But they don't include me. You're making decisions that I didn't help you make. And look where you're at today. Your marriage is in shambles. Your children are from pillar to post. And you're saying, God, what's wrong with me? What's wrong with me, Lord? Am I that bad a guy? No. It's just you're out of His will. And when you're out of His will, you're in His way. Can I just be plain with you this morning? God is here this Sunday morning. Somebody asked me the other day, Preacher, what are you going to do when you retire? I said, what if I never get to retire? Huh? What am I going to do? What are you going to do tomorrow, Job, if you lose everything you got? I'm going to trust God. Woo! <laughs> Job said, I'm going to trust God. She said to Job, why don't you just curse God and die? Job said, you speak as a foolish woman. Shall I trust God just in the good times and not in the bad? It ain't always been a bed of roses for Brother John. I've been on the mountaintop, but I know what it is to walk through the valleys of the shadows of death. I know what it is to be at death's door and feel like I couldn't take another breath. What are you telling me, Brother John? Somebody's making plans in here, but you don't include God in them. And I'm asking you, where will your plans lead you, sir? Ma'am? Where will your plans lead you this morning? If it, listen, can I speak to you just bluntly? Because I love you. 
If your plans don't include God, you're going to end up in hell. That's the bottom line. I'm not here to beat around the bush. I'm not here to pat you on the shoulder and tell you what you're doing is okay because your blood will be on my hands and I will not have that. So if your plans doesn't include God, one day you're going to wake up like the rich man and in hell he lifted his eyes being in torment and he said God get me out of this mess get me out of these flames it's too late you see if God is not in your plans and you take your last breath it's over it's over for you I love you this morning but I won't lie to you. You see, the Bible said, Know ye not what shall be on tomorrow. Huh? Jesus told his disciples, He said, Go out in the highways and hedges. Carry nothing with you. Just go. And if you get to a house where they don't want to hear you, wipe the dust from your feet. Move on. I give you the word this morning. It's up to you, ma'am. It's up to you, sir. What you decide to do with this message this morning. It's up to you, ma'am and sir. What you decide to do with God. But if you choose to reject Him, you'll die and go to hell. If your plans doesn't include God, you're lost and undone without Him. What about it this morning? What about it? Every head bowed and every eye closed. I feel like God's talking to somebody here this morning. You've been fighting against it. Fighting against it and fighting against it. Why not go ahead and give into it this morning? The devil's telling you can't make it. Can I tell you the devil is a liar? Amen. You can make it as long as God is in your plans. God is directing you and guiding you. Huh? Devil's told me that many, many times in my life. You'll never make it. But by His grace, I'm still here this morning. Amen. By His grace, I'm still here. If you're here this morning and you've heard this message and God is not in your plans right now, but you want Him to be, would you slip up your hand and say, Preacher, Please keep me in your prayers. God bless you, son. God bless your daughters. God bless you, boys. God bless you, daddy. But, but stay with me just for a moment. I said if he's not in your plans now, but you want him to be, what happens if you don't get that opportunity? What happens if death angel comes tomorrow? And you never dart these doors again alive. And you never have another altar invitation. What will you do then, sir? What will you do then, ma'am? There's nothing here to be ashamed of this morning. We've all been there. We've all been in that same boat. But it's up to you now, ma'am. I've done all I can do for you this morning. God's presence is in the house. It's been here all morning. God, the Holy Ghost is in this place today. Sing the song for me softly, sister, if you would. Do you love him this morning? Do you want him in your life? If you do, I'd like to just ask you one more time to come down here and just meet me at the altar. Let me just pray for you. That's all I want you to do. Is there another? <sighs> Is there another? Is there another? Come. Come on. Don't worry about what nobody's got to say about you. It's not about them. It's about you. This is your life. You're the one that's got to stand before God. What about it this morning? Would you come? 
I'm getting ready to pray for this young man. Would you come and join us? What about him? Come on, that's right. Here's some more coming. Let them out. Come on, son. Just sit right here on this front row with me. Come on, God's still calling, folks. God's still calling you this morning. Sit right there for me. Brother Small, if you'll come right up here with him, please. Somebody else, I'm, I'm trying to wait. I'm trying to be patient. Because I don't want you to die lost. I don't want your plans to not include God this morning. What about it? What about it?